Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Rewind that. It's your girl, Miss K. If this is your first time coming across my channel, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe if you like the vibe and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. All right, guys, today we're going to be going over the latest episode of The Shy, season four, episode number three called Native Son. So the episode starts off with a morning at Kevin's house and Nina is letting the kids know that she's going to be cooking lasagna for dinner tonight. But Keisha says that she doesn't want any but has no problem eating junk food, right? So Nina tells her that she has to feed the baby healthy foods as well. You if know. she doesn't want to eat healthy or not, the baby still needs nutrients. Then Nina shows Kevin a timeline and lets him know that certain spots in the timeline will determine his success or unsuccess. We can obviously see here that Nina is worried about her son's future, right? Especially since he got suspended from school. Anyway, next we see that Jake was suspended from school as well because they found little Dakota going down on him. And we're actually hearing all this information from Shad's mouth, okay? Because he just got all the tea. <laughs> all right, we also see that for some reason, Jake gets a little testy with Trig. When Trig tells him not to stomp in his house, Jake says, this ain't your house, this is Reg house. I don't know what the heck that was all about, guys, but you know Trig ain't going for the disrespect, and he had to check Jake real quick okay and i'm like don't start now jake you know keep it going y'all got a good momentum y'all have you know your relationship seems to be going in the right direction and growing keep it up don't start with no daggone disrespect okay i also want to mention that trick seems a bit frustrated with shad you know just being unproductive around the house plus you can tell that he doesn't want jake spending too much time around with shad because you know he doesn't seem like the best influence next Tiff gets home and Emmett wants to know where the heck she's been. She tells Emmett that she was with a client and yes, she's having sex with him and he gives better you know what <laughs> than you do, okay? And to me, Emmett took this better than most men would, right? But he wanted to know if Dante pulled out and Tiff says, we both came a lot so I don't remember if he pulled out. And to me, that was a little disgusting. You know, the fact that she had sex with Dante with no protection is very irresponsible. Um, but maybe she was just saying those things to get under Emmett's skin. I don't know. But later on, we did hear her tell uh, this other couple that she cheated on Emmett and she enjoyed the sex. So she wasn't lying about that part. Next, Trig bombards a meeting between Tracy and Duda. He comes to tell Duda that it's all over the news that the police are not going to be policing their neighborhoods. Trig says, you know, some folks are happy, but some old grandmas and aunties aren't so happy about this. And they need to come up with a plan. So since Duda offered to give Tracy's organization $5 million, she decides that they could use some of the money to provide community protection. Next, Dre is at a doctor's visit with Jada, and we see that she's being very supportive, right? But earlier, she lied to Nina and told her that she was going to an early meeting at work because Jada doesn't want Nina to know because Nina might tell Keisha, who might tell Emmett. Anyway, the doctor tells Jada that he wants her to start her chemo treatment this week due to the aggressiveness of the cancer. After the doctor leaves, Dre tells Jada that she has to tell Emmett at some point because she can't go through this alone. But Jada says that Emmett already has a lot going on and she doesn't want to burden him with more stuff, right? And that's when Dre tells Jada that everybody has burdens, right? And I definitely agree with Dre. Jada is displaying an attitude that plenty of women get, you know, myself included, where we could be going through trials and won't share what's going on because we don't want to stress other people out with our issues. But what Jada is doing is a little selfish, you know, because Emmett has the right to know what's going on with his mother's health. And, you know, she's taken away his choice to be there for her. But it did look like she tried to tell him later on when he came to her apartment, you know what I'm saying, all unannounced and everything. But he was way too upset when he found Suede there and he walked out. Next, once again, Rose is telling Duda what he can and cannot do. You can't just dismantle a whole system in a day. There are a lot of rules, lots of red tape, you know. But Duda is like, forget the rules. I'm doing what I got to do. So when she tries to get Marcus to talk some sense into Duda, to her surprise, Marcus agrees that it's a crazy plan, but tells her that it's possible. Plus, if the plan succeeds, it would be a good thing for the city and the Olympics will definitely be begging to come to Chicago. And that is all he really cares about, guys, the freaking Olympics. That's that's it. That's his whole agenda. 
Then Marcus tells Rose and Duda that the biggest hurdle is getting the black communities together and getting everyone to agree on some ground rules, which is very true. So Rose was like, whatever, call me when you have a plan. After she leaves, Marcus says to Duda, if this goes wrong, you'll be the laughing stock of Chicago. And Duda says, but if it goes right, I'll be the next hero of Washington, which was always his goal, right? Next, Nook comes into Imani's shop, telling her to do one of his girl's hair. And we know this is a soft spot for Imani, right, guys? She doesn't like to see girls involved in sex trafficking crimes and things of that nature. Anyway, Shad comes in from running an errand and Nuck sees him for the first time since Shad got out. So they go to get something to eat and this is where Nuck tells Shad that Imani is not a woman but a man in a dress. And honestly, guys, if they didn't bring it up this week, that was going to be my next question. What will Shad do once or if he finds out that Imani is a man? So far, we didn't get to see like a real reaction from Rashad, so we don't exactly know how he feels about it, right? Will he accept it or reject it? Comment down below. Next, Tracy and Trig are doing what they got to do to unite and protect the community, and they get their first call, which is to settle a domestic dispute. It starts off a little rocky because Trig got punched in the face by the guy, you know, but it worked out in the end. So we see that Trigger's really stepping up for the community, guys. But when he gets home, Imani wants him to step up for the young lady that Nuck brought into the shop. But Trig was like, that's not my business. That was her choice. I can't tell Nuck what to do and he don't work for me. You know, all these excuses, you know what I'm saying? So Imani got very upset and told Trig to sleep on the couch tonight. And, you know, I get Imani's point. But Trig going against Nuck is likely to cause more problems in the streets, you know. And he's trying to bring peace into the community, not war. But I do think he should talk to Duda because if Nuck is a part of the 63rd Street mob, then Duda should be able to regulate, right? But at the same time, guys, I'm really not sure um, if Nuck belongs to the 63rd Street mob. I forgot. So whatever. Y'all let me know if that's the case. I don't remember. Next, Jake allows Gemma to interview him on her little show, you know, and it goes well. But Gemma was doing a little too much, you know, asking Jake if he was wearing cologne and telling him that he looks nice, you know. Now, at this point, Kev basically pushed Gemma right toward Jake because she asked Kev first if he could go on her show, you know, and discuss the little paper that he wrote during their time, their little in-house suspension, right? But Kev was like, no, you know, that's nerd stuff. And he just left her there. I'll talk to you later. I'll call you later or whatever. So by repeatedly neglecting Gemma and pushing her away, these are the results, right? Gemma asks Jake for the interview as a backup plan. You know, she says she's tired of talking to these white people who don't know nothing. And that was her little manipulating way to kind of like say something that she knew Jake would relate to, right? Anyway, this little girl is already full of games, okay? So like I said, this little interview, this has given them a chance to bond, all right? We even see that Gemma places her hand over Jake's as he struggles to, you know, get through one part of the interview. And, you know, once she places her hand over him, he was able to get a little more comfortable and really express himself, right? And Kevin saw this going down because he watched the interview with his class. Next, Tracy comes to drop off a report during a meeting that Duda was having with Marcus and Rose. So while Rose wants Tracy to hurry up and get out, you know, she was real stink about it too. Like, we're in a meeting, you know, just funky. <laughs> anyway, Duda tells Tracy to stay and give her opinion about the Olympics. So Tracy was like, why do we care about the Olympics? Black people are dying and many of them are being killed by the ones who are supposed to protect and serve them. We don't care about the Olympics. We just want to see our kids grow up, right? So Marcus says that the ceremony will provide many jobs for the people and kids in the city right but Tracy is like they don't need jobs they need someone to look out for them so we obviously see that Marcus and Tracy don't agree and that's because Tracy actually knows what the hood needs right Marcus is just a rich black man who doesn't know anything about the struggle like he thinks he knows but he doesn't you know he just wants exposure that has nothing to do with helping the black community but all about his own advances right Anyway, after Tracy leaves and Duda tells Rose to leave as well, Marcus tells Duda to be careful of Tracy. And to me, he's only saying that because he can see that Duda actually might listen to Tracy. But honestly, though, guys, it does seem like Tracy is like the black widow of the shy because the men in her life, 
they always seem to get killed. Like, you know, you had her son and then Ronnie and possibly Duda. So, like, we're not sure if Duda dies, but he does get shot. Okay. Next, Tiff and Dom's tasting is a success. And it starts off fine as well. Because during the setup, Tiff and Dom established that they are good. Tiff is not mad because she's tired of being mad. And we already know that Dom just wants to stay friends, right? She expressed to um, Emmett that she doesn't have a lot of female friends and she really likes Tiffany and it just would be nice for her to have a friend okay so we're good there next Nina prepares dinner for her family and we see Kev going crazy because Jim is not returning his text we also see Keisha in her room crying okay because you know she's really going through it and I believe it's because she's struggling with thoughts of keeping her baby. We saw in an earlier scene how she looked at little EJ and when she gave him a hug, you can tell that it affected her. So I just feel bad, you know. I know this is a serious struggle for her. And like I've told you guys before, I do believe she's going to wind up keeping the baby. I don't know how her family is going to react to that. But at this point, she has to do what she needs to do for herself. It's her choice, right? Next, Tiff tells Emmett that she wants to have an open marriage. And this seed was planted by the homosexual couple she spoke to earlier during the party. They were telling her that married people should be able to make their own rules and blah, 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 right? So to me, it was bad advice. Terrible freaking advice, actually. And in my opinion, Tiffany didn't take much time to think things through, right, before bringing this decision to Emmett. I think it was a rash decision. I think it was stupid. You know, I do have lots more to say on this matter. So I'm just going to save it for a separate video, right, guys? So you guys stay tuned for that. Next, Rose comes home to find Tracy and Duda about to get it in. And, you know, she says that she didn't get an invitation. And when they stop, Rose says, don't stop now. I like to watch. So Duda thinks it's a wrap, you know, because obviously he's like, all right, we already know Tracy ain't about to freaking let you sit here and watch us. But Tracy's little freaky behind pulls on Duda so they could finish what they started. And Rose actually sat there to watch and started getting turned on. And that was just a little too awkward and freaky for me, guys. Um, you know, but whatever. Uh, and that is how the episode ended, okay? I thought this episode was cool, you know, not anything that crazy going on, but it was a good episode, and I do believe that it drove the story forward. So let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. Until next time, you guys take care and be blessed. Bye-bye.